Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to give you an exciting video. Today we are talking about my three favorite brands of hiking socks, and we're gonna look at how I decide on which socks to take hiking. It's a sock video. These socks will keep you in great form no matter what the conditions when you are hiking. So whether or not you are hiking in hot conditions, cold, rain, or snow, maybe you just wanna buy a new pair of socks to wear around the house. Well, today we're gonna to go through them and I'm gonna show you what I use. So keep watching if you wanna know how to keep your feet healthy and happy while you're out on the track hiking. Let's get into it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Mouser here, and here on this channel, we look at all things hiking, travel, and the great outdoors. And today, we're going to be talking about the unsung hero of any hiking outfit, the socks. Let's get into it. Now, while some people may think socks aren't all that important when you're going on a hike, it is actually fairly important. And I'm speaking from experience here, poorly fitting socks can lead to an overall horrible experience and a constant worry while you are on a walk, especially on those big, long walks. You start day one with a blister, you've got troubles. So today we're going to look at the different types of socks, the different materials they're made of, and which socks might be right for certain conditions. Now, before we get into the detail, please like and subscribe. If you're enjoying the videos and you've watched a few, subscribe, hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell button down below too, and you'll get notified of when the next weekly video is released. We're releasing videos weekly, so please like them, please subscribe, makes a big difference to the channel. Also, none of the sock brands have sponsored me in this video today. These are just brands that I like, that I've used, that I have tried and tested out on the track, and the ones that I currently use while I'm out there. There is a lot of sock brands, and I don't mention them all in this video by any means. These are the ones I use and the ones that I like. Now, let's get into it. When it comes to hiking socks, there are quite a few different factors you need to consider. First and foremost, you want a sock that's going to be comfortable while not contributing to hotspots or blisters. Hotspots are those little things that where the rubbing starts, they get warm, they get hot, they get red, and they're the precursor to a blister. You don't want socks doing that. Over the last 30 years, as a hiking guide and an avid bushwalker here in Tasmania, I have had my fair share of blisters, both myself and among the people that I've guided through Tasmania's wilderness. Got a couple of blisters on each foot, which is not fun considering we've got another six days out here too, so. Now, while many of these are due to incorrect footwear or poorly fitting footwear, myself included, the socks chosen by people can also sometimes be a factor. What happens if that doesn't work? What's the next? Uh... We may cut the back of the boot out, worst case, but um, we'll keep you updated. You can have great fitting boots, but if you've got poorly fitting socks, that can definitely lead to rubbing and blisters, and it's something you want to avoid. Now, we're going to talk about boots in another video, but today's video is socks. When you're heading out on a walk, you want a sock that is durable, well-wearing, and well-fitting. Now, on most of the walks I do in Tasmania here in Australia, pretty much any time of year, you can guarantee you're going to get wet feet. No matter what boots you wear, no matter what socks you wear, you can pretty much guarantee it. That's the conditions I walk in. Unless you're on a hardened track in the middle of summer, somewhere like the Overland Track on central Tasmania, you are pretty much guaranteed your feet will get wet when you're out for more than a couple of days. There's not a whole lot that you can do about your feet getting wet here, but Having the correct fitting sock is very important in helping prevent blisters and rubbing when your feet get wet. So socks are crucial in minimalizing this sort of rubbing and discomfort as well as foot pain. They make a huge difference and there is nothing better than when you are wearing a nice pair of socks on the trail. Now let's start off by talking about the materials our common hiking socks are made of. First up is wool. <coughs> Now wool has this property, like a lot of garments we wear around the bush when we're hiking, when we're bushwalking, it is moisture wicking. And what's that mean? Moisture wicking means it draws water, including sweat and moisture, away from the skin and pulls it out to the outer layer of the fabric, thereby keeping the skin dry. In addition to this, wool is very good at something called thermoregulation, whereby when your feet are hot, it allows them to breathe by circulating the air, but when it is cold, it'll help keep them warm, obviously with the insulating properties of the wool. And when it is wet, the wool will trap warm air in and keep it close to the foot so that your foot can stay warm in cold, wet conditions. So it's almost like the perfect fabric for socks. In addition to all that, wool has also got antimicrobial properties. Antimicrobial helps prevent the spread of bacteria and the growth of bacteria, and that prevents things like smell, and it also contributes to preventing blisters and sort of skin problems on the feet. So that is good too. 
Then you've got your synthetic materials like your nylons, your polyesters, and there's another one called spandex. Now, synthetic fabrics are generally cheaper than wool, and unless it's cold weather, they dry quicker than wool does. In the cold weather, they don't. And very cold during the night. So cold that my socks froze where they were hanging. So. <laughs> Frozen socks for brekkie. Synthetic fabrics also have a better warmth to weight ratio. That is important when everyone's trying to save weight these days. So for the warmth you get, you don't need as much fabric as you would with wool. But because of that, because they're a bit lighter, they can feel a bit cool and clammy when the fabric is wet because they're a lighter, more permeable fabric. The other thing about synthetic fabrics is that they are a bit more durable than wool. They are, over time, more resistant to holes and tears than what a pure wool garment would be. So you're probably saying, Mouse, why is that all relevant? What's this wool synthetic? What are you telling me all this for? Well, I, I just thought that was interesting, so I thought you should know. And also, most of the socks on the market these days, and the ones that I prefer now, are a blend of the wool and the synthetic fibres. So you're getting the best of both worlds. But in addition to what the sock is made of, I also think there are a few other factors that are important when considering a pair of socks for hiking. Number one is the wicking, which I spoke about. It should be moisture wicking. You want that in a sock, that is essential. You want that sock drawing the moisture away from the feet. Number two, thermoregulation. That is, it should be keeping your feet cool when things are hot, and it should be insulating your foot and keeping it as warm as possible when things are cold and wet. And thirdly, it needs to have a good fit. I prefer these days the anatomical socks that have the left and the right on a pair. So they're anatomically shaped to the right and left feet. I think that's important. You don't want these bulky toe boxes. You don't want seams protruding and having those sort of square edges on the socks. Nothing like that. You want a form-fitting sort of sock that is going to slide onto the foot and have a form factor around the foot and not be baggy, not be loose, that sort of thing. That is going to help prevent blisters. And one important thing to point out before we go any further is that cotton doesn't enter into any hiking conversation as far as I'm concerned. Cotton is a terrible fabric for any hiking garment, for socks, for shirts, whatever you want to call it. Cotton has no place in the hiking fraternity clothing wardrobe. Cotton is bad, okay? You see, cotton absorbs water like a sponge and it just holds onto the water. It doesn't release it, it doesn't wick it. And when cotton is wet, it doesn't insulate anymore at all. It becomes non insulatory. What do you call it? Non insulatable? It doesn't insulate. Anyway, it doesn't keep you warm anymore. It's it's toast and you will be too if you continue to wear cotton while you're out in the trail so no cotton here we could go on about it forever but i'm not we're going to get now into the socks the other thing you may want to consider when you are choosing a hiking sock is the length now there's a few different lengths some come right up to the knees and they're good if you want a bit of extra insulation that sort of thing in colder weather some people like those i am more of a crew length sort of guy i like the ones that sort of come up to the mid calf the crew length sock that's my preferred option and unless i'm wearing trail runners or something like that if i'm wearing a trail runners if i'm out on doing some trail running in the bush then i would generally use like a lower cut ankle sock or just above the ankle sock what are those called i think they're called ankle socks aren't they i think aren't they maybe but that sort of you know what i'm talking about that lower ankle sock i would prefer if i'm wearing runners if i'm wearing gaiters in any situation then i'm a crew length guy that's my preference but everyone's got different preferences so there is that length factor as well now let's look at some of my favorite brands of hiking socks that i have used and tried over the years First up is one that I used pretty much from the beginning of my hiking career, and I probably used it for the best part of 15 years, and that was Wigwam socks. Wigwam. Wigwam. Wigwam socks. Wigwam. Now, they were a popular brand in Paddy Pallon stores, an outdoor hiking store here in Australia. I went with them initially, I guess, because that was the only brand of sock you could really buy in my local area. So Wigwam were a mainstay for years. Specifically, it was their Cool Light Hiker Crew Midweight Sock. That is a mouthful, isn't it? That is such a mouthful. Their Cool Light Crew Midweight Hiker Sock. Yeah, that's what it was called. Anyway, loved that sock. Loved it. It was a good one. And it was great for those warm hikes. It was the, in their Ultimax range. They have this range called Ultimax. So you can add that onto the name as well. Ultimax Hiker Crew Midweight Light Sock. 
what a mouthful. Just call it a midweight hike through sock or something. But anyway, I digress. So yeah, the Ultimax socks, they were great. I took them as a guide over summers when I was working as a guide and wore them on the track. The only downside is that they are fully synthetic. They've got no wool. As you can see here on the screen, that are the components of the sock and there is no wool in there. It's fully synthetic. So it lacked those benefits of the wool, which I talked about a bit earlier. So I would always take a second pair and that was a Merino Comfort Hiker 2 in the Wigwam socks and that had a wool component and that had these sorts of components to it with a bit of wool a bit of merino wool in fact sheepy merino wool also had a bit of nylon bit of polyester that sort of stuff and they were a good warm sock to wear around the tent when i got to camp so that was a wigwam brand served me well for years then i walked into the hiking stores one day and it was all gone wigwam was no more in my local area in the shops so i was looking for some new socks and i started doing a bit of research and i was looking at darn tough never tried the darn tough yet love to hear your feedback on those if you think they're good but i ended up moving over to smart wool i had a few smart wool garments i had some of their thermals and beanies and things great stuff love the smart wool I wanted a woolen sort of sock so i initially ordered something from the states because you couldn't get much smart wool in australia at the time but now they're selling it everywhere it looks like smart wool sort of taken the place of wigwam and we've moved to smart wool socks and i have found the smart wool really good on colder walks especially when there's a bit of snow that sort of thing their names are a bit of a mouthful as well the first one i bought was their hike classic edition light cushion crew socks that is such a mouthful i mean come on Come up with some better names, guys. Anyway, that's them. Love these. These are my favorite pair of socks I've ever owned, I reckon. They're just really good. These ones are over 50% merino. So they're made up of this sort of percentage of each of the materials. 56% merino wool makes them a great sock. And even in the heat on these, these are still, even though they're a light cushion sock, I find them quite thick and warm. And it has to be pretty cold for me to wear a different pair of socks other than this in my boots, even in the cold. Uh, I find them really good when my boots are wet and they don't deform too much. Really nice, actually. They're both sort of, they've got that moisture wicking about them. They've got that little bit of padding on the heel and on the toes. And there's no sort of seam on the toe box either. It's really like so subtle. It's all sort of form fitting in one sock, which is what you want in a pair of socks. Look at that. So there is sort of no seam or bumpy bits on that sock, which is quite nice. And I like the color too. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And that's a smart wool. Hike classic edition, like cushion crew sock. And I really think you notice a massive difference when I've moved from these fully synthetic socks to these ones with 56% wool in them. I really noticed a big difference in the way my feet sort of stay warm and don't sweat as much when I'm hiking on the holidays. So I've got those. And then I've also got these, which is the smart wool high classic edition full cushion crew socks and these are just a bit thicker with more cushioning and these are generally now what i take on every single walk these ones come every time as my tent socks and they're my backup if things get really cold to put on with my boots if things get cold and really wet and quite nasty i find these do the trick for me if it was middle of winter in the snow then i'd probably take something different again but i'm not a big fan of snow and hiking in the snow but if i had to i would wear these maybe with a second layer maybe not but we'll do a snow edition some other time so yeah they're my backups that is the smart wool hike classic edition full cushion crew they are great and they come on every hike as my backup sock the light cushion crew well they were coming on every hike then i got some blisters earlier this year on a big walk and i discovered a new pair of socks after that walk i wanted something a bit thinner again than these for those really hot summer days i just found on my last day of this nine day walk that we went on that these were a bit too thick they on those really really hot days with the boots on in the sun my feet just still sweat a bit even with all the factors that this offers with the regulation and the wicking and all that jazz i found that feet are just a bit hot on those hot days so i did a bit of research looked around and i found one that i have absolutely fallen in love with and that is these that is the silverlight hiking socks now when i first found the website for silverlight hiking socks i was a bit dubious they just look like a basic sort of athletic sock i looked at them and thought that looks more like sort of something you wear to the gym but looked into a bit more ordered a couple of pairs and i have loved these socks whenever i've worn them i'm actually just wearing them day to day now wearing them all the time because they're so comfortable the unique thing about these is that not only 
have they got a bit of crossover synthetic and wool they're 53 percent wool they don't actually feel wool but they're 53 percent wool it has silver woven into the fabric why you ask well silver has long been used in many applications such as wound dressing and healing and it kills bacteria now i'm a former pharmacist and you used to see silver used in a lot of dressings a lot of things like that the technology these days with wound dressings and stuff many of them contain silver which helps with healing, which helps kill bacteria. And it would make sense that you would use these somewhere that's gonna get wet and sweaty and potentially have wounds like blisters and things. It's gonna help with the healing and help with prevention by killing bacteria that can lead to blistering. And by killing bacteria, you're also gonna prevent potential yucky smells. So you can wear these things for days. I have worn these things for sort of five, six days and they have not got smelly and they're beautiful, they smell. Quite good right now. I haven't worn them yet today, though. But um, yeah, that's the silver light socks. So yeah, you can go quite a while without having to wash it. They last for days out on the track, and they're also very quick drying. They're not overly thick, but they're thick enough to keep your feet quite warm. It's hard to kind of describe. I'd say they feel like a similar thickness to these, but funnily, they feel like they feel like they'd be cooler, and they are cooler. And when you wear them, they fit well. They're also anatomically shaped to each foot, but they don't actually indicate which foot each one is for. So that makes things challenging. I end up just whacking them on whatever, but I haven't had any trouble with them yet. The other thing with these is they've got a lifetime guarantee. So if you don't like the socks for whatever reason, if somehow you put a hole in, which I'd find very hard to do, these are very, very durable, but you can return them. They don't fit properly if you don't like them anymore. I don't know. On their website, it says you can return them and they've got a lifetime warranty and they will send you a new pair. So that is a pretty compelling deal i actually bought three pairs when i bought these off the website i reckon i might get some more because i wear them so often now i've always got some on the go and i just love good socks so silver light so yeah the silver light socks great socks they're going to be coming on every single walk with me from now on day walks extended walks big 10 days which i do at least one of a year they're going to be coming on that and i reckon for my future big walks for a nine or ten day up i would take definitely one pair which i'll be wearing on the track of the silver lights i would take my warmer backup full cool cushion hiker mid-weight crew smart wool whatever you want to call them and i take them as my warm camp sock i love having a nice warm pair of socks especially in those cold wintry days that you get in the middle of summer here in tasmania they still come every trip and i reckon those two socks would do me i would wear these every day for 10 days if i'm feeling a bit extravagant i might take a second pair of the silver lights if i'm really feeling crazy you can get them in a little ankle length as well i've got the crew length in the silver lights can get the ankle length might get a couple of pairs of them for running that would be good i think but yeah there you have it that is just a quick overview of the socks i wear that's what i'm doing out the track we're taking those ones and that's all i need for anything up to 10 days i think that will be fine not a problem at all maybe with a second pair of them if i find a weight saving somewhere else so that's it that's what you got you got your smart walls you got your old traditional wigwams if you like the wigwams give me a shout out down below if you found the silver lights before i'd love to hear what you think of them i think they're a great sock if you haven't tried them i recommend it there's links to all this stuff below and with the silver light i think there is some affiliation link that i've got where i can get a discount on my future pairs or something so if you want to help the channel out please do that next time well we're going to talk about a bit of literature on the channel we're going to talk about tassie hiking books and my favorites looking forward to that one that'll be next week i'll see you then don't forget to like please subscribe please tell your friends about the channel i just had an email from someone in pakistan who i used to know at university who has just stumbled across the channel and been watching a few vids so shout out to you patty great to hear from you and great to hear of the adventures in pakistan loving hearing from all the subscribers getting lots of comments on the videos would love to hear from you and i will see you on the next one till then Get out the trails, have a great time and enjoy the hike. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.